Hello, everybody. Welcome into the Apples and Genos Fantasy Hockey Podcast. My name is Nate Groot Nibelink. I'm the creator of Apples and Genos, originator of the Zero G Draft Strategy. And in this podcast, I'm going to take some fantasy playoff mailbag questions and talk about the biggest hot shots and have nots of the last couple of weeks. Let's get it. Welcome in, everybody. I do not have Blake here with me tonight, unfortunately. Uh, Blake did an admirable job uh, running the waiver wire pod by himself there, and so he's got the night off tonight. But that gives me free reign to do whatever the hell I want here, and whatever the hell I want is uh, apparently just going live, trying to help some people out. So leave some comments if you're in here live on YouTube. Leave some comments. Let me know what you need help with. We're just trying to get everybody some fantasy hockey championships around here. Speaking of which, lots of people in the Apples and Geos Discord server today talking about how their matchups have gone. Lots of people moving on to their finals or semifinals. Some people signing off on their seasons uh, finally. Ran into a, an opponent they couldn't conquer. It happens to everyone. Don't worry. Uh, we'll be back next year. Definitely uh, lots of lots of fun to see everybody uh, coming together in the Discord server, though, and to see everybody, uh, yeah, just signing off on the season or, you know, celebrating together the achievement. Uh, I absolutely love to see that. So shout out to everybody in the Discord server. I love to see it. Keep it coming. For myself, I'm super excited. I had a really good run out this week. All three of my playoff teams are advancing to the finals this week in the Apples and Geos Patron League in my Kakuffle Tier 3. So I got a chance to play for a shot at Tier 1 next year in Kakuffle, which is pretty fun. And then in the Content Creators League, put it on by the Fantasy Puck guys. I'm going to the finals there as well. So that's pretty exciting. My only uh, league of the season that I didn't get to the playoffs was the Apples and Genos Experts uh, Keeper League, where I kind of went all in last year, threw away some draft picks, and couldn't uh, rise out of the rise out of the mud this year against some pretty tough opponents in there. But uh, Blake's in there going for the win against Reese's Pieces, who's been a longtime member of the Apples and Genos Discord server. So shout out to those two going at it this week in the Experts League as well. Uh, yeah, it's just an exciting time for fantasy, so I'm excited to be live with everybody today. We got a bunch of people in the chat already. Pravin's in here saying, let's go, Mr. C. As a follow-up to the Discord question, are we riding with Laugh, Trevor Moore, Rust, or Druin for Week 25? All right, I will put a pin in that one. I'm going to star that one for myself here so I know to come back to it. Uh, I am going to get to all the mailbag questions that were submitted in the Discord server, but uh, not quite just yet. Uh, Adam, shout out to the rest of you fantasy hockey sickos, and congrats on the wins. Absolutely love to see it. So if you've been listening to any of the podcasts recently, you know that we've been asking for uh, basically people to fill out the Apples and Genos listener survey for this year. Uh, lots of you have already. If you haven't already, uh, that link will still be active for a while, so you can definitely still get your input in. It's uh, yeah, a big piece of what we look at when we're trying to determine what worked and what didn't for this year and what we can improve on for next year. Uh, we're always about continuous improvement and trying to get better at this both in fantasy and in fantasy uh, content creation for all of you so if you haven't gotten your answers in yet then definitely do that but we do have a listener survey winner i said i would pick a winner of anyone who uh, submitted the, the survey sent me a screenshot of them submitting the survey and the winner is fitty 77 in the discord been a member of the discord server since february 2021 less than two months after i created 
the Discord server for Apples and Junos. There must have been less than 100 members in at that point uh, easily. So shout out to you, my good friend. And uh, yeah, thanks for all your support and being a member of the Discord server since then. Well deserved. And yeah, I'll send you uh, a link. I'll reach out to you back on Discord and we'll get it figured out. But you're going to get some Apples and Genos merch headed your way sometime soon. All right. I don't want to waste any time. we got a full slate for tonight. I am going to try to get some have-nots and hot shots in here tonight, but I do want to hit the mailbag first, so let's do that. Mailbag uh, pulled from the Appleton Juniors Discord server. AC first up. Teams with easiest schedule to pick up goalies is to cord a good ad. So I did write myself some notes for this one because it's obviously a bit of an open-ended question here. Um... So yeah, I'll just run through my notes here. But basically, I've seen Philip Gustafson dropped in some leagues. If he's out there, he's definitely a priority. He got a couple of starts here back to back, played pretty well. Uh, Minnesota has four games upcoming. Seems like a pretty clear priority in my mind. Uh, next up, you got uh, at 52, and or I think uh, if I remember correctly, I think Corpusalo is the one who is. 51% rostered. I'm going to fact check myself here just for a moment. Not that it really matters. 52 and 51% rostered one way or the other are Eunice Corpusalo. Corpusalo is 51% rostered. Joey Decord is 52% rostered. Assuming Decord goes Monday, he should get two starts. Corpusalo has an outside chance at three starts. If I flip over here to zerogar.com uh, in their weekly segment, you can see obviously all the different teams here. Uh, and if I sort by the score, we can see that Ottawa, somewhere down here, has a pretty good schedule. Four games played this week. So I would anticipate that Corpus Allo gets at least two of these games, possibly three. Uh, if he gets the Mon or Tuesday, Thursday games, then he will obviously get one of the Saturday, Sunday back to back. So outside chance for three games, but definitely two games for Corpus Allo. So I don't mind that. Corpus Allo has actually been playing really well as of late as well. Ottawa as a team has been playing better as of late. So that's obviously nice to see as well. So I would take Corpus Allo over the cord, but behind Gustafson, you got Jake Allen, uh, New Jersey. Has has two back-to-backs next week, four games, but two back-to-backs. So probably only two starts out of him, but he's been playing quite well as well. Uh, pretty solid option there. I think I would take, take Jake Allen over Decord, even if Decord does get the two starts. Connor Ingram probably gets two car two starts, one versus Vancouver, which is not great, one versus San Jose, which is definitely great. Um, yeah, that's a middle-of-the-road option. Montembeau has a tough road to hoe this week. Um, again, outside chance that he gets... Uh, three games this week but most likely only going to get two but they have florida tampa toronto and new york rangers this week does montreal that is a rough week for any goaltender not to mention a goaltender on montreal so um yeah probably looking elsewhere than montembeau mackenzie blackwood also a good option for volume san jose plays monday thursday and then saturday sunday pretty good chance that you get three games out of blackwood maybe even the best chance of all these goalies that i've mentioned they've got seattle they've got la then they've got st louis and arizona so pretty good chance that blackwood gets a couple of not so tough opponents and then la which is a solid team as of late but definitely not a team known for absolutely blowing the doors off you offense wise so i do like the Mackenzie Blackwood uh, option in volume uh, kind of uh, accumulation leagues and then you know kind of down towards the bottom of the barrel if you're going with Columbus goalie I would go to Neil Tarasov probably only two games played there Samuel Erson the starter in Philadelphia also an option still but he's definitely been trending downwards as of late so that's a quick zero g rundown from me for the week um, yeah, I think if Corpus Allo, if Gustafson's out there, I'd go him. If Corpus Allo's out there, I'd go him. Uh, after that, Jake Allen would be my my play. Then Decord, assuming he goes Monday, uh, if you have to make a decision before then, man, then maybe it's better to go to uh, Connor Ingram. Uh, and then Mackenzie Blackwood would be my other shout out just for pure volume and the fact that San Jose doesn't have an awful schedule this week. All right, we got that one in. We got a few more comments in here, so let me get into that. They're all from Pravin. When analyzing goalies, your recommendations of analyzing the opposing teams, 5v5, shots per 60, Corsi 4 per 60, scoring chances 4 per 60 was great. That said, are one-day streaming goalies in the champ... Are you... 
Uh, he clarified in a later comment, are you streaming one day streaming goalies in the championship round? For example, Ananin versus Columbus or Stolarz versus Montreal. Um, generally, no. Uh, I really very rarely am I one day streaming goaltenders. Um, you know, there are some formats where the weights are just ridiculous for goaltenders where it actually does make sense to do so. Um, you know, one goaltender game can very easily get you like 20 plus points and your best, uh, skater game is probably not getting you like more than like 10 or 15. Uh, so there are some situations where it does make a little bit more sense. Overall, though, I'm really trying to load up volume, and especially in this week where we have such a wide open schedule where, you know, uh, Monday, Tuesday, we have eight games played. So you probably can fit anyone you want to in for Monday, Tuesday, even on Thursday. Uh, I think it's a nine or 10 game. Uh, I should go back and double check myself here. But yeah, overall, just in a week like this where it's very spread out schedule, Saturday is the heaviest day. And even that's not the heaviest day that we typically typically get in a typical week. Um, and a week like this, I really want to maximize my skaters. They're more predictable. Um, yeah, it's just a lot easier to just overwhelm your opponent with a lot of points from your skaters uh, in a points league. So that's the way that I would typically be going. You know, in a Cats league, if you can get a really good start and get a high goals against average, high save percentage out of one start, sometimes those ratio, ratio stats are really good to have. So in that case, maybe it makes a little bit more sense. But by and large, I'm really not looking to ever one day stream a goaltender unless, you know, it comes down to it on a Sunday and it's the best option uh, for whatever reason. So uh, that doesn't change for me in championship week whatsoever. You know, if I've got a guy from last week and he's got one more game on the Monday, um, like a backup from last week who played, uh, you know, a back-to-back -back, um, or is going to play a back-to-back -back upcoming, but he also got a late start last week and I had him from that start. Um, you know, there are times in which I'll do that and then just drop him after that. But uh, by and large, I'm not picking up goaltenders for one game streams at any point throughout the season. Um, we got another question in here. Time to drop Svetch. Shots and hits went down big time. Yeah, Svechnikov is a really interesting one for sure. I'll drop him in the sheet here. Uh, one that we've been touching on a lot here lately. Just one assist his last five. The shots are per 60 are still nice. The average time on ice is not terrible. Uh, so that part is still checking out, but obviously the arrival of Jake Gensel has really put a ding in Andrei Svechnikov's armor. He's still on the top power play, but not on the top line. So he's playing with Jordan Stahl and Tevu Teravainen, where Gensel's riding shotgun with Aho and Jarvis, which is obviously the place to be. Overall, I don't know that Svechnikov is somebody I'm looking to really get off of. The shots per 60 is still really good. Um, so that's kind of belying the, the point you're getting, you're making there, I guess. Um, but the shots per 60 is still pretty good. I know in the last game he only had one shot, and so it looks pretty bad. But he had four shots, five shots, two shots, five shots before that. The hits have been very intermittent. He had four of the five games he had zero hits, and then one game he had three hits randomly. So they've definitely gone away to some extent. You know, uh, it's a big time. It's a big time drought for sure, and it's not a great spot to produce from. It really depends on what your options are for sure in your league. If your options are pretty good, like if you're in a ten-team league, then yeah, there's probably somebody out there that I could advise would be better than Svechnikov, especially in this week for Carolina, where they don't play until Thursday. They play Thursday, Friday, Sunday. Uh, you got three three days at the beginning of the week here, where there's a myriad of teams that you could pick up a guy and he could play two games for you before you're even thinking about that Thursday, Friday, Sunday schedule, you know, maybe there's even a team, uh, maybe there's a player on your team who's playing Monday, you can hold them there, you can drop for one of the teams, uh, we got like New Jersey, for example, plays Tuesday, Wednesday, you could drop for Tuesday, Wednesday, you could drop Svechnikov there for Tuesday, Wednesday, and then you could pick Svechnikov back up on waivers for the Thursday, Friday, Sunday, you know, that one way to look at it. Uh, there's definitely some artistry that you could do, I guess, with Svechnikov this week. In general, I think the player is fine, but definitely at a reduced level. It's definitely not crazy to be thinking about dropping this player at this point. Also says, thanks, Nate. You guys rocked this year. Lots of great feedback throughout the year. Appreciate you there. Josh asking, Drew and Duclair, Tarasenko, or Zuccarello? Uh, keep two for the whole week, 25. Stream two for Monday, Tuesday, but drop to fill 
opening Wednesday. Now, who replaces them come midweek? So I believe you asked this question in the Discord server. I believe I've got this on my sheet. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to get to that one just next. So we'll hang on to that one. Um, other question here, starting week with Stolars uh, and Medelkovic drop midweek and grab question mark. Uh, yeah, so that's an interesting one, definitely with the schedules that we have here. So Pittsburgh has the Monday, Tuesday back to back, so you're definitely getting a Nedeljkovic start there. And then I believe Stolarz has already been confirmed. Uh, I forget for which game, but again, it's the same situation. The Monday, Tuesday back-to-back -back is there against uh, Toronto and Montreal. So either way, you're getting starts out of both goaltenders on between Monday and Tuesday. Uh, after that, then I would go back to that list that I was I was going to here with the goaltenders, right? Um, so you got Jake Allen, who's got the two back-to-backs. Uh, that would be a good option. Uh, yeah, if Gustafson's out there, Corpusalo, I believe Ottawa, if I remember correctly, yeah, they don't start till Tuesday. So if is starting that Tuesday, uh, one of the guys who started on Monday would be a good uh, drop to get Corpusalo in. Uh, Connor Ingram doesn't play till later in the week, so that's actually a really easy one. Even if you got the, if you got uh, one of the one or both of those uh, goaltenders going on the Tuesday, then you go to Arizona and they don't start their week until Wednesday. So that's a good pickup there. You could go with Ingram getting the Wednesday and probably Sunday starts the way that they've been rolling every other game between him and Vich Melka there. So that would be my takeaways there. All right, let's get back into this. Let's get to this question that you just mentioned here, but also put in the Discord server. Uh, so yeah, Druin, Duclair, Tarasenko, or Zuccarello. So we got keep two for the whole week 25 and stream two for Monday, Tuesday, then drop to fill opening on Wednesday. Who would replace them come midweek? So Arizona and New York Rangers are the only two teams that finish the week Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. So that keeps you away from the heavier Thursday and Saturday uh, days there. You do want to check the Sunday because the Sunday is relatively heavy as well. I believe it's a nine-game slate on the Sunday. Uh, so you do want to double check and make sure you got room on the Sunday to actually get somebody in there. But both of those teams have some interesting players. You got Lafreniere, obviously, if he's available from the Rangers, then that's absolutely the move, uh, in my opinion. Obviously, had a monster game here, five-point game uh, this past week. Uh, definitely on the top of everyone's mind. In Arizona, you got actually a bunch of options. Uh, they've moved some stuff around, uh, but Bukestad, Schmaltz, Keller has been the top line for a bit now. So Schmaltz out there in a lot of leagues. Uh, on the power play, it's been Kerfoot uh, back up there again, but Genther makes a lot of sense there. So Schmaltz and Genther both on the top power play. Schmaltz also on the top line. Schmaltz is still my guy in a lot of spots unless you have an inordinate weight for goals. Um, yeah, and a more or less standard points league, I would still take Schmaltz, then Genther, then Bukestad, uh, but definitely a lot of interesting options there. Logan Cooley has been hot, as we'll get to later on, hopefully, in the hot shots. Uh, so you could look there as well just to try to stay in the flames, but uh, definitely a bunch of interesting options from Arizona as well. So that's a really good look um, to find multiple players that are probably available in your league. If you have room on the Thursday, then you've got Carolina, Colorado, Washington, all those teams uh, play Thursday, Friday, Sunday. So they still avoid the Saturday, but... Um, uh, do play on the Thursday. So those teams would all work as well. Uh, obviously, you got Drew in here. Uh, who you might keep if the deployment holds uh, through that point. Uh, Washington, obviously, you got guys like Strom. Um, you know, you got Oshi, maybe. Uh, Carolina, there's not a whole lot. Most of those guys are pretty rostered. So, um, yeah, there's definitely some options. Strom, if he's available, would be the key one from those teams. But, um, yeah, definitely a lot of options from there. Hopefully that gives you... Um, gives you some idea if you want to hit me up with in the comments here it seems like you're on right now then uh yeah if any of those uh strike your fancy or if i'm uh not giving you anything yeah that really helps out there for depending on who's rostered in your league then definitely we can dive in a little deeper but um, that's the way that i'd be looking in this kind of scenario where you're trying to look past the monday tuesday where a lot of people are streaming a back-to-back -to, -back to open the week and then looking into something for the back end of the week i think both of those options uh the wednesday friday sunday teams arizona new york rangers or the thursday friday sunday teams carolina colorado washington uh, both of those are really good options 
All right, new feeds had this question, 10 team head-to-head points, list the uh, categories there, but basically asking, choose one from each pair, uh, Seattle, Beneers, or Everly, and Tampa Bay, Duclair, or Hagel. Uh, it's an interesting one. It also adds, I'm planning to add two LA Kings, Byfield and Arvidsson. Would you take both Seattle or Tampa Bay players instead of the LA Kings pair? If so, which one LA King would you take ultimately currently leaning Beneers, Duclair, Byfield, and Arvidsson as the ads. So Duclair being on the top line with Kucherov and Point is an obvious um yeah point, I guess, in his in his favor. Uh, not to belabor that point. Uh but overall I think let me just throw the guys in the sheet. We'll look at them all together. Beneers, Eberly, Duclair, Hagel. Let me get these guys in here. Maddie Beneers Jordan Everly, uh, Anthony Duclair, and Brandon Hagel. And then we'll compare them to Victor Arvidsson and obviously Quentin Byfield as well. So Beneers actually has four points his last five games, 19 minutes a night. That's looking okay. Metrics are still pretty terrible on the season, just 32 points in 68 games. Not what we wanted to see. Jordan Eberle, close to 18 minutes a game, three points in his last five. Metrics are not great, but not as bad as Beneers overall. Uh, on pace for 49 points is eberly has got 41 and 69 so far. Nice. Uh, Anthony Duclair, four points his last five in just over 15 minutes. Hagel still skating 19 minutes a night, but just three assists his last five. Duclair's metrics far better than Hagel's in getting that Kucherov exposure at even strength, as I mentioned. Arvidsson's got three points his last five, 18 minutes a night, just about. Uh, Byfield, four points, all assists his last five, just about 18 minutes there. Arvidsson's the one that's been on the top power play, shooting a little bit more. Byfield's got better individual scoring chances for last five, which is a little bit interesting Arvidsson better on ice numbers so definitely a lot of interesting things going on there and a little bit hard to parse let's look at the schedule for these teams so LA plays Monday Wednesday Thursday Saturday uh, better early week than late week schedule there for LA then we got Tampa Bay uh, has the exact same schedule. And then you got Seattle, which has just Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So uh, more off nights there, obviously, for Seattle. But uh, they only have three games. So you, if you're maybe you're not getting anybody in for the Saturday already, and maybe that's relevant to you. But um, yeah, just something to think about. If you are if you have an open spot on the Saturday, then you're missing that extra game there. So... What I would say overall, just from a, you know, profiling them as streamers, I think I would take Duclair first, um, just because of the hot streak, because of the exposure to Kucherov, who's obviously absolutely insane right now. I think that's the way I would still go. It is a little bit, uh, yeah, you're putting your eggs in the Kucherov basket for sure. If things kind of go south there, then um yeah it could get rough i guess is what i'm saying but i i would still just bet on the exposure to kucherov and the fact that Duclair has really worked there the individual scoring chances for per 60 the last five games 23rd in the league that's really really nice really really nice stuff there so that i think is the way that i would go i would go jordan eberly i think i think i would go jordan eberly over maddie Beneers still a slightly better metrics. Um, I like the power play unit. He's on a little bit better with Schwartz and McCann. Um, so I would take that one. I would take Everly over Beniers. I'm really finding it tough to love Hagel at the moment. He's trending down for me. I know he's getting minutes, but um, yeah, it seems like he has a really tough time producing anything of significance away from Kucherov and Point, and that's pretty tough to stomach at this at this juncture. Uh, so I think Hagel would trend towards the bottom of this list for me. I think it would be Duclair and Arvidsson for me overall. Uh, Duclair, Arvidsson, Byfield, Eberly, Beneers, Hagel. Final, final answer, uh, I think. Uh, Hagel, Hagel, Beneers, Eberly, all kind of mixed up for me. But assuming you're getting the same number of games played out of these guys, uh, that would be the way that I would go. All right, let's get back to the comments. E Dangler 28, Stream Bertuzzi or Sorelli for Monday, Wednesday. Points League, face off 0.1. Uh, 
have Matthews and Kucherov. Um, Sorelli, I just don't believe, is ever going to score you any points. That's my biggest problem with Anthony Sorelli. Um, I know he's got four points in the last five, but he's only pacing for 45 on the season. It's just not great. Um, really tough to deal with. Uh, Bertuzzi got three goals in his last four here. The underlying metrics are a lot better. Uh, if Marner's back, then maybe Bertuzzi gets punted off the top power play unit, and that really would affect him. So that would be the one caveat here. Um, yeah, that part is tough, I guess. Uh, I'm just verifying that we're looking at the same thing. So yeah, Monday, Wednesday uh, for both teams, right? We got Monday, Wednesday there for Toronto. We got Monday, Wednesday for uh, Tampa Bay. So yeah, just want to make sure that that was correct. Um, yeah, it's almost a dead heat for me between the two. If Bertuzzi, the, the factor that Bertuzzi could be off the top power play, which is a good chunk of his... Um, of his appeal, I guess you would say. Uh, that is uh, of strong consideration for me. Sorelli, I guess. Um, yeah, I guess Sorelli. <laughs> I really don't want to go with Sorelli, uh, but I guess I would just because I'm a little bit worried about Bertuzzi potentially coming off the top power play there. So I guess Sorelli, but uh, yeah, I don't feel very strongly about that one at all. Toronto Dave, hashtag zero G. Good to see you, buddy. Nate the Great. Yes, um, I'm here. I'm here for the people. Adam M. Shalush, 18 League, five ads for the week. In a week like this, with a lot of options. Do you lean towards saving ads for later in the week? Uh, in a Cats League, he uh, later clarified. Five ads for the week. Um, I would definitely save a couple, um, but I would definitely be trying to get a couple of these Monday, Tuesday back to back to open the week if I could. Uh, a couple of streamer spots for sure. Try to get a Monday, Tuesday, a couple of Monday, Tuesday back to backs. Get maybe a midweek uh, if you can get uh, Wednesday, Thursday back to back in there after that in a spot. That would be a nice look as well. Just really try to maximize the games up to there. But then you do have Friday, Sunday. Um, lots of teams with Friday, Sunday options. So you got lots of options at the back end of the week. So yeah, that's probably something like how I would try to frame it. Monday, a couple on Monday, Tuesday, back to back. See what you can open up an early lead in. See what you need to stream uh, in a cats league. What you need to stream for and away from in terms of categories. And if you get a bunch of games played on uh, in your lineup early in the week, that should really give you some direction on how your team's performing and what you can really do the rest of the week to solidify categories and take home the W. So, I think that's the way that I would do it. New feed says, thanks, Nate. Really appreciate the thorough walkthrough to my question. Absolutely. That's what we do here. The Mark Skinner uh, recently beat me in the consolation round of the Apples and Chinos Expert League. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you're on notice, buddy. But as Blake would say, but I'll answer the question this time. Uh, I currently have UPL, DeSmith, and Samsonov. Leagues count wins, losses, saves, shutouts, and goals against. Is there anyone there you're moving for this week coming up? Any possible zero-G suggestions? Thanks, bud. So, yeah, obviously I went through the zero-G suggestions a little earlier, but yeah, I am worried about UPL uh, with the schedule. Levi had a good game. UPL lost to Toronto. Don't think it was his fault necessarily. Uh, got beat with a couple good shots and wide open net on a, a missed clear out where the defender had broken his stick. Saw a bunch of that game. So not really faulting UPL for the game that was. But uh, my question is, does UPL get this Tuesday start against Washington or do they go back to Levi now after Levi had a good start Friday? Um, that is the big question for me because if Levi gets to start Tuesday, then there's a really good chance that Levi also gets to start Sunday. And then you're holding UPL for one random Friday game uh, midweek, uh, towards the end of the week, really. And so that's really tough uh, to be holding UPL in that instance. So I'm really watching that. If there's any indication that it's Levi for Tuesday, then I would drop UPL really fast. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm not really looking for one game stream from anybody. So UPL would be of consideration there. DeSmith, uh, Vancouver also doesn't have a great schedule. They go Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, and then Saturday. So yeah, there's some interest there. Um, around what exactly DeSmith is going to offer you this week. Uh, there's a good chance that, you know, Silovs would be the one getting the Wednesday. And so it would be DeSmith here on Tuesday. After the Tuesday, do you want to drop him then? Um, and then, yeah, see about 
uh, Saturday, if and when it comes, like, I'm not excited to start to Smith, right? I don't think anybody is. And so could you get the Tuesday off of the Smith and then go to Ingram, as I mentioned? Um, you get Vancouver coming off the back to back. And then I think it was potentially, let me go back and yeah, it's San Jose on the Sunday, probably for Ingram. So that would be a potential way to play that. Uh, that's obviously an option as well with the Smith Samsonov. I think, I think they might go back to Samsonov after the shutout there on Saturday. There's Wall has played a bunch of games. Um, there's an outside chance that Samsonov comes back in on the Monday. Obviously, you'll find out the answer to that question pretty soon. All these goaltenders have the potential to only have one game played this week, which is obviously not a spot you want to be. I think probably at least one of them gets two starts this week. That's the one that I'd really hang on to. Um, if multiple of them get two starts in the week, then I'd hang on to them. It's really just about volume, I think, at that point uh, in my mind. So that's the way that I would go. Um, yeah, in a league where you're getting yeah accruals for wins and saves, uh, chances for shutouts, you know, that's a spot where I think you wanna, you wanna probably just be, um, yeah, going with the one who's gonna accumulate for you, and I think that's gonna be uh, just whoever's playing most games, obviously. So that's the way I do that. Reese's pieces asks Svechnikov or Rust for this week in a points no banger stats but heavy shots weight can get Svech in for three games, Rust in for two. That's an interesting one. Uh, Brian Rust. Let's see what Brian Rust has been doing. Shots volume is uh, it's there because of the time on ice right over 21 minutes a night is really nice um but yeah uh, that is that is a little bit tough he does have five points the last five games obviously Svechnikov really low on points scored it's really tough to overlook the fact that Russ is literally skating five more minutes every game uh, then Svechnikov is at this point. The underlying stats definitely go Svechnikov's favor. Rust is hotter at the moment. Um, yeah, gets the exposure to Crosby. I believe I'll double check myself here, but I believe still in the last game, uh, even strength on the Crosby line and then on the power play as well on the top power play with Crosby. So, um, that is tough. If it was even, I think I would go rest, but because it's three games, I think I'm still going with Svechnikov. Um, I don't feel good about it. I really don't, but I think I'm still going with Svechnikov. I'm going to trust in the metrics there and trust in the player um it's a cold streak but he's got some some days off this week to get himself right and get things together you know maybe they change up the lines again by then i don't think it's probable but it's possible anything's possible in carolina so um i think i'm going svechikov for the three uh, but i don't feel good about it <laughs> all right max asks head-to-head uh, -head cats league wins goals against average save percentage and shutout scott skinner as my only goaltender i'm eyeing one of the seattle tandem for this week as both are currently available do i use a waiver ad on to court or do you think grubauer gets san jose in anaheim this week um so yeah let's go back to seattle seattle plays san jose monday la wednesday anaheim friday i do think it's going to be the cord uh getting both of those starts it's just the way that it's run out the last little bit makes me think that um it is tough though it's very tough i would not be shocked if grubauer gets in there um i i don't want to be in this position i guess uh is what i'd say about this i don't think that it's i don't think that it's such a good spot that I would make a theoretical ad on a player that I don't even know is starting the game, uh, right? So I would, if Decord gets picked up, uh, if he's gone before you can get to him, and he ends up being the guy who gets the San Jose for, uh, in Anaheim starts, then you know what? Um, so be it. I'm I'm gonna be okay with that. Um, you know, there's even a chance that Decord gets the Monday start and then uh, Grubauer comes in. And he plays amazing against LA and he gets the Anaheim start. That's not out of the question either. So there's just a few different ways in which I see uh, Decord ad going wrong without knowing for sure that he's at least getting the Monday start. 
So I don't think I can, in good conscience, make that ad uh, without knowing that ahead of time. Uh, there's lots of other options, as I've mentioned in a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of times already. So there's lots of other players uh, that I would potentially go get, who I still think can provide you some decent rate stats. Uh, yeah, if I had to go back to the list and go over it for rate stats, uh, let's check out who Allen's got potentially this week for New Jersey. They got Pittsburgh, Rangers, Ottawa, Nashville. Yeah, the, some of those teams can put up some goals, I guess. Um, it's not the most intimidating thing. I do think Ingram against a tired Vancouver team and then probably San Jose on Sunday is a decent option as well. Who does Ottawa play this week? Uh, Ottawa goes Minnesota, Florida, New Jersey, Washington. Uh, depending, It kind of depends, I guess, on which games that Corpus Allo gets there. Um Blackwood, as I mentioned, he's got Seattle, LA, and then one of St. Louis or Arizona at the end of the week, most probably. Uh, that's not the not the worst thing, but definitely definitely a little bit more tough to stomach in a Cats league. Um, yeah, I just think there's a few options there between Allen, Ingram, Corpusalo if he's available. Uh, I just think there's probably a few options that are available in your league seeing that the court is um that i think that you'll be okay <laughs> i guess uh if you don't get the cord uh if he literally is the only one on that entire list there uh that is available then maybe i'd feel a little bit differently but uh, i think that's the way that i'm gonna leave it for now all right yarmir asks first of all thanks to the whole team at apples and genos for the awesome information and entertainment during the whole season first fantasy season and i made it to the final in my league congratulations looking to add a player with four games in week 25 here are some available available players who would you pick up a couple scoring thanks so list of available players uh pierre luc dubois braden shen jack roselvick jeremy lauzon ricard raquel anders lee ross colton nick paul anthony sorelli warren fogel kirill machenko dmitry Voronkov, william eklund um, so, uh, basically immediately my eye goes to the top two Dubois and Shen. I think it would be between those two. Sorelli, I guess, uh, kind of fits into this mold a little bit. I, as I mentioned, I'm not a big fan of Sorelli. I think he's just as likely to go cold as he is to stay hot, um, relatively hot as he is at the moment. So let's check out what we got in Dubois and Shen in terms of the underlying stats here. We got Dubois, we got Shen. Over the last five games, Dubois has two assists in his last five, 15, just over 15 minutes average time on ice. Underlying metrics, not great. Uh, Shen, three assists his last five, 17 and a half minutes average time on ice. Shots uh, per 60, 113th. Individual scoring chances for 154th. On ice numbers a little bit worse than that. Gonna double check the St. Louis lines and see if anything has changed there since the last time I checked. Um, basically, it's Shen with Saad and Kairou, same as last time. I'm definitely not on the top power play. Dubois, I, I think we went over with the Arvidsson. Yeah, they move stuff around, but he's definitely not on the top power play. Um, and he's been, yeah, moved between a few different lines, and none of them are particularly compelling i think it'd be shen for me um just the time on ice shen has always been a fairly reliable streamer you know you're gonna get something out of shen he's gonna throw the body around he's gonna block some shots he's gonna do a few different things the fact that he's actually shooting a little bit uh, over the last little bit is kind of nice he's got kairu on his line which is one of the better line mates he's had uh they've typically loaded up the top uh line there with kairu buchnevich and thomas which kind of just left shen on his own so having kairu on his line kind of helps him out at even strength a little bit so i think i would go shen there um it's definitely not the greatest uh list of players to be adding from but i think that is the route that i would go in this scenario all right, we got to the last one from the mailbag. This is from the Fantasy Hockey Professor, uh, Mr. Mike C. himself. Nate, what are your thoughts on replacing current players with free agents? Is it simply a matter of if there are clear-cut better alternatives that play more? Do you take a shot, or do you tend to leave well enough alone, save your ads for streaming? I'm always hesitant to take potential points off the board or chase points. As an example, would you switch Trevor Moore, can fit him in for two of the four games next week for Drew N, who would fit in for all four games? Thanks. Um, so in general... 
in general, what I do uh, with all my leagues is I look at the bottom of my lineup. I look at the players uh, that are not like core members of my squad. Um, I wonder if I could do this live for a second. Um, just trying to think which team I could look at for a moment. Uh, I could probably pull over my couple team. Uh, yeah, let's do that for a second. So basically, I would look at my couple team, which you can see if you're watching live on YouTube, you probably should be. Uh, but here we are. Uh, so this is my couple team. Uh, I've got a lot of guys that I consider pretty core members at this point. I got Tage, Stamkos, Ovechkin, Boldy, Konechny, Rust. Uh, my defense feels pretty set. Latang, Makar, Ekholm, Montour. All giving me a bunch of games this week, which feels good. Uh, Brock Nelson has been cold, but he's got a Monday, Tuesday back-to-back. -back. I'm at least holding him through there. At the very least, Lafreniere, obviously hot at the moment. And then I got Byfield, Heinen, and Peugeot on my bench. I picked up Peugeot with my last ad of the week before just the Monday, Tuesday back-to-back -back that the Islanders have just to get a little bit of points. Hopefully he runs into a, a stray point somewhere uh, between those two games and I get a little bit of a boost to open the week. And uh, my goaltenders, I've got Talbot, Corporate, Salo and Logan Thompson. I'm actually thinking about dropping Logan Thompson uh, before the week even gets started. I'm not sure that he gets both games this week, and even if he does, you know, is it really worth holding him for Tuesday and Friday from Vegas? Um, you know, the fact that it's Friday makes it a little bit better because I can still have some um, optionality off of the Thompson play this week, assuming that he does get both, but it will feel pretty bad if I play him on Tuesday, hold him all week till Friday, and then it turns out that he doesn't play, and then I drop him, and I could have picked up an extra game play just for uh, not having the gumption to drop him earlier. Anyway, still trying to figure out what to do there, but clearly uh, Peugeot is just an early week stream that I'm dropping after Tuesday. Heinen is the guy that I'm probably dropping. Uh, he has been playing with Pasternak, which has been a good spot. Got a goal for me last week, which is where I picked him up uh, for the Tuesday-Wednesday back-to-back that Boston had. Just ended up uh, with injuries and whatnot that I ended up dropping other players. Didn't need to drop Heinen. Um, moved around some other pieces instead, so he's still hanging on. But he's the clear drop here on this team, in my opinion. And then Quentin Byfield is a potential drop, but also, obviously, I'm looking at the schedule for LA. I'm looking at the fact that Byfield has four points in his last five games. Uh, LA does have a pretty solid schedule here, and I don't really need to move off Byfield uh, until the Saturday. I can get him in every game until then. So that's where I'm at with these guys. So basically, Heinen is the only guy who's profiling as kind of like a clear drop. He's kind of below replacement level. You're not expecting a whole lot from him. And um, that makes him a clear guy to move off of. So that's really what I do. I go through my lineup. I identify the drops first, the potential drops. Um, and then I go out and I see if there's anybody who kind of moves the needle for me. Uh, and move, by moves the needle, I mean, are they A, a better player um, by, you know, obvious metrics and obvious deployment? Or B, are they getting me more games played? Um, and more games played uh, versus the versus the metrics versus the deployment is always the game we play and that's where a little bit of the uh, the artistry comes in I guess but um, that is what we're about here and what we're trying to figure out so Heinen would be the guy to drop then I would go look at the ads list and I would just kind of go see who's going to get me some games played this week I would look at my roster and see you know uh, kind of as you have, right? You got Trevor Moore, you can fit him in for two of the four games, uh, but Druin would fit in for all four games. Uh, in that case, I think the four versus two is a clear a clear boost in my mind. Moore has definitely fallen off, and so I would go for Druin in that situation. For me, I would pick Druin, obviously, over Heinen. Uh, I'd just pick whoever that best player who I could get in for all four games, or if there's you know a really good player out there who I can get in for three games, then maybe I'd look that way. Or if there's, you know, another player who I can get the Monday, Tuesday back to back and then think about an ad uh, uh, move off after that, then that would be another option. So all those things come into mind for me. Uh, but definitely, I don't think Moore is like a caliber of player that I have to hold on to him, especially in a championship week. Uh, I would move off for Juan or, you know, someone similar who's going to get me the four games this week.
All right. We got some comments in here. Hollywood's in here. How's it going, Hollywood? He says, Nate. Uh, e. Dangler says, you probably went over this, but it's fetch a drop and maybe a pickup later in the week. Depends on your league for sure. Uh, depends on what you're doing. E. Dangler says, if I can get a goalie stream for two days. Uh, yeah, if you can get two, if you can get two goalie games uh, Monday, Wednesday before... Uh, you have to get uh, especially got back then definitely i think that makes some sense um especially if you're confident that you can get Sveshnikov back. It really does depend. Uh, there are some scenarios in which it does make some sense, especially if you're confident you can get him back. Um, yeah, I went through some of those uh, earlier on. You know, if you got a guy who's playing Monday and then you're going to drop and then um, get somebody in for, you know, a Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday Wednesday and then drop, um, you know, maybe you drop Svechnikov after the Monday Um and get in a Tuesday, Wednesday, and then add them back for the Thursday, something like that. Uh, if that's how your waivers work in your league, that could work. So, yeah, I think there are scenarios in which it does make some sense, especially if you know you can get them back. Um, but it's not a player that I'm feeling confident about dropping, if that's the question. Um, as an example for that question, would you drop Byfield if Duclair was available? Similar schedule, but maybe statistically better. Um Probably not uh, in that case. Uh, I don't know that the difference there is so significant. I don't know that I'm willing to bet on that. I'd rather bet on the games played uh, from a slightly inferior, uh, quote-unquote inferior stream um, than I would for just swapping out one for one. I'm very rarely swapping out a player one for one. Like It has to be uh, a move that I'm pretty confident that the player is better uh, like objectively better or yeah just playing objectively better um, both have four points the last five games I think Byfield is a plenty good player he's getting more minutes uh, than Duclair Duclair obviously getting better deployment has some good underlying metrics at the moment um, but that deployment could change as well I, I think Byfield's place in LA's lineup is a little bit more cemented in that regard um, so yeah, there's just enough questions between the two that I don't view one as significantly better than the other, where I would just drop one for the other. Uh, all right, so let's move on to move of the week. We got here 46 minutes in, but we got here. So really, I just wanted to talk about uh, a little bit of what I did with my two buy teams this week. Uh, it's a little bit in retrospect, so I know it's uh, maybe not helping anybody out, but maybe there are some people going into, you know, they have the week 26 playoffs and they can help them out. But basically what I did this week uh, in the two leagues where I did have to buy the content creators and Kakupful, uh, didn't overplay my hand this week. So in this first week where I'm actually playing the matchup, uh, I didn't overplay my hand, used my buy to set up the week as best as possible, but I also didn't waste all my ads, you know, trying to make sure I had the win, uh, especially after I got an early lead in both of those. You know, after Tuesday, I had an early lead, pretty decent lead uh, after Tuesday, so I didn't feel like a lot of pressure to, you know, like find a one-game stream and hopefully they go off and make a big difference. The probability of a one game stream really um, just going off and winning you your week is really slim in any given week so I didn't want to just go ham on that I'd rather you know save some powder uh, see how the week progresses a little bit especially if I've got an early lead like that and after Thursday I had a comfortable league uh, comfortable lead in both of those leagues and so I just ended up holding some ads for this upcoming week 25 for the championship round um, I could have used those ads you know if things went really sideways on Saturday and I was feeling pretty pressed then I could have used those ads on Sunday to you know grab Alex Kalorn or somebody like that um, but I didn't have to in the end and I was able to use those ads to set myself up for this week 25 championship week uh, in Kakuffle as I mentioned I grabbed uh, Jean-Gabriel Peugeot and I also actually grabbed Cam Talbot uh, I had two ads left at the end of the week because I was winning by so much there uh, humble brag I guess but um, that I felt really confident I didn't need to use my last two ads so I got myself set up with a goalie who potentially could get three games this week was dropped uh, by his manager uh, last week and then uh, in my other league, I picked up, uh, I actually forget who I picked up uh, in the other league. It was uh, one of the Monday, Tuesday back-to-backs uh, that I picked up to get myself set up for the week. So that's how I did it there. Uh, that's how I think you should do it. If you're in a, a league that goes to week 26 and you're in a similar situation where you've got yourself set up really well for week 25 here, 
um yeah just don't overplay it see how the early week goes you get a good idea of this monday tuesday uh, we're getting a bunch of games played between monday tuesday so you get a good idea of how the week's going there um yeah stay fluid with it uh, don't rush out and feel like you gotta nail everything right away um, definitely use some ads if if it's going to help you out but uh, you don't have to absolutely go nuts uh, day one i feel like sometimes people come off the buy and they're all pent up from not having not having uh, had a matchup the the week before and they go out and they spend a bunch of ads early in the week especially if night one doesn't go well like the other team has a good uh good first night or something like that they absolutely go nuts and they actually end up hurting themselves a little bit more than they should so just uh preaching a little bit of patience um you know don't let that patience take you too long don't react when it's too late um but definitely i think you know we got a monday tuesday here where we're going to get 16 games played we're going to get some idea of how things are rolling and that's when you can start to you can start to make some bigger moves so that's my advice there Pravin asks, would you drop Trevor Moore to pick up drew o'connor despite the lack of power play deployment for o'connor um so I'm going to double check. Uh, I would have to assume that you're getting more games played out of the Pittsburgh players. So Pittsburgh goes Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And what was LA? They were Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. So there's only one game played between the two uh, difference, the Tuesday versus the Wednesday. It's hard to imagine that you're getting more games played out of O'Connor. So um, even if you're getting one more games played out of O'Connor, I would not because I think there's it's just as likely that O'Connor's off the top line um, as soon as like the second game of the week. So I would not drop Trevor Moore for Joe O'Connor in almost any circumstance. Hope that helps. All right. We don't have a lot of time left here, but I'm going to try to run through a few hot shots, a few have-nots. Uh, do a few things for you here. Um, just want to shout out a few guys at the top here. I'm going to decide who I'm going to prioritize here from the list. But Jamie Benn, I think, deserves some accolades for what he's been able to do. Um, yeah, eight points, five goals, last five games here. The underlying number is looking pretty good for Jamie Benn. Uh, really good, actually. Uh, really tough to uh, talk any Yang on this man at the moment. 52nd in shots per 60, 70th in individual scoring chances for per 60, 21st in both Corsi 4 and scoring chances for per 60. Great stuff from Jamie Ben coming alive at the moment. Uh, Dallas, not one of the teams with one of the better schedules. They only have three games. They play Wednesday and then not again till a Saturday, Sunday back to back. So not a great schedule for Dallas. I would like, I would drop him if it, he's not really going to help you out this week in terms of games played. But you know, I don't want to, obviously, with the way that he's been playing. Alexis Lafreniere, also the exact same stat line, five goals, eight points his last five games, obviously had the five-point night there, uh, which is contributing a lot of this. Um, 17 and a half minutes per game, 82nd shots per 60, 119th individual scoring chances, four per 60. On ice numbers, not as good. Uh, but overall, with the schedule this week for the Rangers, which is the best schedule, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, um, yeah, it's pretty tough to do anything better than Lafreniere in terms of streaming or anything like that. Uh, absolutely think Lafreniere is a priority in a lot of leagues this week. Jonathan Druen's got seven points, three goals, last five. Blake touched on Druen. Um, the on ice number is absolutely amazing. Third in Corsi, four per 60. Fifth in scoring chances, four per 60. On ice scoring, or the individual scoring chances, four per 60, rather, 71st. Um, in the league over the last five games, which is pretty nice for Druen. Uh, the shot's still not so great. 22 and a half minutes a night, which is what they do with the top guys there in Colorado. Anybody playing top line, top power play is going to see that kind of usage. Yeah, I, I you have to like Druen at the current moment. Uh, there's no two ways about it. Do I think that he stays on there all week? Uh, I think that's maybe like a 60-40 proposition at this point. Uh, 60 being that he does and 40 being that he doesn't. But yeah, you have to like it at the moment. Schmaltz and Strom, Nick Schmaltz, Dylan Strom, two goals, seven points each. Um, in their last five games, both skating over 20 minutes a night. Both of them not so great in the shots per 60 or individual scoring chances, four per 60 numbers, but pretty solid stuff in the Corsi, four per 60 and scoring chances, four per 60. Both make pretty good streamers this week. I mentioned Arizona has that back end of the week, Friday or uh, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday uh, schedule. And then... Um, 
uh, Washington, <laughs> had a brain fart there, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Wednesday, Sunday, or Friday, Sunday, uh, to end the week. So potentially four games played out of Strom uh, and three off, uh, pretty much off nights, I guess, out of Schmaltz. Uh, both make really good options this week, and I'm pretty interested in both players if they're available. Logan Cooley also has four games, uh, four goals, seven points in his last five games, skating over 16 minutes a night, 115th in shots for 60. A little bit uh, less inclined to believe that this one's going to stick around, but it's nice to see the kid finally get something going. Uh, as I mentioned, I would still take Schmaltz. I would still take Genther. I would still take Bukestad over Cooley. Speaking of Bukestad, he's got four goals, six points in his last five. 18 plus minutes a night the shots per 60 up at 58th individual scoring chances four per 60 up at 83rd on ice numbers not so good but playing even strength with keller and schmaltz is a good spot to be i think bukestad makes a fine back end of the week stream especially if you got a monday tuesday uh back to back early in the week back end of the week you pick up bukestad you're probably loving life there and then Matthias Ekholm was the last of the hot shots that I wanted to shout out. He's been amazing for a hot minute now. Uh, but in his last five games, he's got a goal and five assists for six points, gaining 22 minutes a night, fifth amongst all defensemen in shots per 60 in the span, 13th individual scoring chances, four per 60, on ice numbers, terrific as well, 15th in Corsi, four per 60, 12th in scoring chances, four per 60, doing all this without top power play. Really impressive stuff from Ekholm, contributing in a big way uh, to... Um, everything going on in Edmonton, uh, the way that they're rising up the standings at the moment. So a huge shout out to Matthias Ekholm, a guy that I've been high on uh, because of these metrics being pretty high um, and a guy who's contributing in a big way to a number of my teams. So a uh, big shout out for Matthias Ekholm, absolute stud. I am going to switch over to the have nots here, but before I do that, I am going to answer a couple more questions. GRM with ads remaining for this week and seven next. I'm thinking to add, uh, to drop favor, Faber and Pinto to stream in Palmieri Arvidsson for the early week schedule, then pivot to other streamers to maximize games thoughts. That's exactly the way I do it. Uh, absolutely love that. Uh, Honestly, if there's anybody else from Florida, the Islanders, or uh, Pittsburgh who's available uh, with the early week schedule that works for you, uh, if you have an extra spot on the Tuesday, for example, then maybe I'd even go that way because I do really like the back end of the week streams and it might be easier to fit somebody in like a Schmaltz or like a even a Bukestad or a Genther or something like that uh, for that like Wednesday, Friday, Sunday uh, end of the week. It might be easier to do that than to go the Arvidsson route and then have to try to find like a Thursday, Friday, Sunday if that does work for you. So um, definitely check out your uh, check out your uh, lineup for each of those days and make sure that it's going to work out for you. But uh, check if you actually do want to do the Monday, Wednesday with uh, LA there with Arvidsson or if you want to actually double up on the Monday, Tuesday back-to-backs early in the week. Uh, Josh just said thanks. All right, we're back in it with the have-nots. Bunch of defensemen, Cam York, Eric Carlson, Keandre Miller, all have zero points their last five. I mentioned Miller because of the great schedule for the Rangers. A lot of people are going to be thinking about adding him. I don't know if I can. He's out there even in Cupful for me in 14-team uh, this week, and I don't know, even with 24 minutes a night, I don't know that I can add Keandre Miller at this current time. Uh, underlying metrics are not promising either. I just don't know that I can do such a thing, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. Uh, Cam York, also not doing anything as of late. That's tough to stomach. Um, yes, yeah, splitting time uh, between the power plays with Igor Zamula. Looks like he was still on the Konechny top power play unit. Um, but yeah, in a split power play situation, he's not doing it. He's skating almost 27 minutes a night. The shots for 60, 25th, not bad. Um, overall, like I don't think you have to drop Cam York. But again, Philadelphia, not one of the teams with a great schedule. They play Monday and then they don't play again until Friday. So maybe hold Cam York for the Monday and then drop him after that would be an option. Uh, but yeah, Cam York, not somebody I'm feeling like you have to hang on to. And then Eric Carlson, uh, man, this has just been really tough to watch in terms of the drop off for Eric Carlson. Um, Latang out played him on the power play. I'm going to double check and see if that was actually a scenario in which Latang was on the top unit over Carlson or if uh, that was just a scenario in which um, 
sorry, a scenario in in which uh, they were just uh, yeah playing the the second unit or Latang spelled Carlson early on one, uh, but it looks like if I go to this on the back end here, it looks like it was. Uh, Carlson playing with the second unit and Latang getting run with the first unit there. So that is confirmed first unit Chris Latang uh, on the power play. And so I think Eric Carlson can be dropped. I don't think you have to again with the four game schedule. Don't know who you're picking up that's necessarily going to be better. Um, again, I, it's not a scenario in which I'm trying to drop a guy to get another random four game player this week uh i'm struggling to think of a name who might actually be out there for you who i would actually drop eric carlson for on defense you know if he's like your potential fifth defenseman then sure uh that makes a bit of difference and then you could go get somebody else or if you have a bunch of room on all the nights and you can stream an extra forward and you can go down to three defensemen maybe that's a move uh, that you would consider if you can get a really good priority four game forward stream that's a potential move that I would look at. Otherwise, you're probably hanging on to Carlson. Uh, and then a few other defensemen here, Darlene, Dobson, and Jake Sanderson, all just one assist in their last five, all skating between 23 and 24-plus minutes a night. Darlene's underlying numbers are the best. Dobson's are pretty good still as well. Jake Sanderson's have not been good at any point. Um, and that's a, a little bit concerning at this point in the season. Maybe Sanderson just starting to wear down a little bit. Uh, still getting that top power play look is Sanderson. Obviously, Dalian and Dobson on the top power play on their squads as well. I don't think you're dropping Dalian or Dobson anytime soon. I'm, I'm ride or die with those guys at this point with what they produced so far in the season. Just Sanderson, though, um, you know, it's a four game schedule again. So, who are you dropping Sanderson for that's actually out there that's actually going to make a difference for you? Similar boat to Carlson in that regard. Is there somebody out there who's actually making a difference for you? You know, maybe in a Bangers Cats, there's a more compelling option. You can just go stream Mario Ferraro or something from San Jose who's going to give you a different kind of production, but more bankable production. You know, maybe that's maybe that's a scenario in which you are off Jake Sanderson. Uh, but I don't think you absolutely have to be, but he's definitely even more on the edge for me than a guy like Eric Carlson. Uh, definitely more in the Cam York side of things there. Um, I'm going to have to cut it short here, but uh, I do want to just say of all these guys, Joel Faraby, zero points his last five. Tyler Toffoli, zero points his last five as well, uh, which is even more troubling for sure. Now you got Gabe Velarde coming back. Uh, does like Velarde bumped to fully off the top power play in that in his first game back and it's Velarde on the top line right away again with Shifley and Connor. So to fully uh, in this week, again, Winnipeg, not one of the teams that has one of the better schedules Monday, Thursday, Saturday, maybe you play to fully on Monday, see how he does there. And maybe you're off him at that point, especially if you're full on Thursday or Saturday or both. Uh, that wouldn't be the worst idea, in my opinion. Um, Robert Thomas is not a guy that I'm dropping. I know what the situation is. I know that it looks uh, not so great to only have one assist in the last five games, getting some bad variance there after getting a lot of positive variance. Um, you know, they play Monday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, I'm just probably not dropping Rob Thomas. Maybe there's a situation uh, in a Bangers Cats where I would consider it, but still skating almost 21 minutes a night. I'm just not doing it. Uh, Charlie Coyle, though, I would move off of. They only have three games this week, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I would move off Charlie Coyle for, you know, somebody with a solid pulse at this point. Um, and then Zuccarello here, one assist. His last five games have been replaced again with Erickson and Eck back. It's Boldy and Kaprizov on the top line again. Obviously, Zuccarello is still there on the power play. I know my number is pretty solid, actually, for Zuccarello. Still skating 19 minutes a night. Um, that that part looks pretty good. 56 shots per 60, 26 individual scoring chances, 4 per 60, 19th Corsi, 4 per 60, 8 scoring chances, 4 per 60. Um, yeah, some of that did come while he was playing up with Kaprizov for sure, but uh, still pretty solid stuff for Zuccarello. I don't think you have to drop him uh, even with uh, the secondary deployment there in terms of the 5v5 and the 
um, and the recent uh, production not being there. Don't think you have to with the four game schedule here for Minnesota, but you know, if there is a compelling option, you know, maybe there is a reason to move away from him. Uh, they are kind of backloaded in the week with the Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, you know, if he's missing two games this week for you, two or more games this week for you, just because of, uh, yeah, having a lot of games played on some of those heavier nights, then I think that's a compelling enough reason to move off Zuccarello. Brock Nelson, one assist his last five, 19 minutes a night. Um, I'm just not moving off Brock Nelson. Uh, the season-long numbers are terrific. The shots are 60-108. It's not bad enough for me to... Yeah, it's just not bad enough for me to be seriously considering moving off him, in my opinion. Uh, I would just be hard-pressed to do it with a guy like Brock Nelson, who I've so dearly loved to, uh, to rub in, in, uh, in, uh, Blake's face so, so many times this year. He's had some weird games for sure. Uh, low ice time in this last game, which is kind of, uh, kind of worrying. So maybe you take a look at Monday, Tuesday, uh, the back to back to open the week and you see how that goes. And then you consider it after that. Uh, but four shots in that 1442 that he played against Tampa Bay in the last game, I'm waiting to see with Brock Nelson. All right, we made it through all that, uh, all the have-nots. So that brings us to, oh yeah, and if we didn't talk about a player that you want to hear about, make sure you join me for tomorrow's live stream. Going to be doing this all again tomorrow, 8 p.m. EST live stream, Puzzling Players. We'll be asking for suggestions for Puzzling Players that you want to hear more talk about. Rang through these guys pretty quick, so if you want to hear some more in-depth stuff too, or if you got some more nuanced questions about some of these players and how they fit into your lineup for the upcoming week, uh, then definitely submit them in the Apples and Geos Discord server when I put out the call for Puzzling Players submissions tomorrow and we'll be doing this again 8 p.m est on youtube come join for that now i do have to recap uh, the head-to-head -head streamer death match unfortunately uh this is just an embarrassment troy terry played four games this week and scored 4.75 cupful points my guy uh we gotta have a talk what are you doing to me i have I have simped for you so hard on this podcast, and uh, this is how you repay me. Uh, but Troy Terry, 4.75 points on the week versus Blake's Ivan Barbashev, 19.5 points. Uh, tried to undersell him there, but couldn't do it. Uh, Barbashev scored three goals on four shots this week. So, yeah, just terrific timing for Barbashev, but uh, it wouldn't have mattered. He could have scored a single goal this week, and it would have outdone Troy Terry's dismal showing. So now it's 13-10, Blake, on the season. He's put together a nice little run here after I had tied it back up. And so it looks like it is going to be Blake on the season. But this week, uh, it's more about pride at this point. But I've got Gustav Nyquist versus his Brian Rust. We will see how that goes. I think that is going to be all we've got for this episode, though. Hopefully it brought you some value, helped you get a little bit better at fantasy hockey today. All the advanced stats you heard today came from Natural Statric, which is a terrific free resource. Many thanks to the band there. They are for supplying the music for the podcast. Be sure to check out their Spotify as well. And that's it, folks. Much love. Mm -hmm.